Oh my gosh, I have built a CNC myself. I really cannot believe it, but I did it and it works. And it's so awesome because when you think I had zero, I mean really zero CNC experience prior to that. I haven't even seen one in person that was being operated and I didn't know anything about CNC. To be honest, I just knew it would push my business to the next level and I had to learn it. This is the Avid CNC Pro 4896. And I want to be mention in the beginning that this is not a sponsored video. I bought this machine myself. I had to pay the full price, but it is really awesome. And their customer support from Avid CNC is just beyond the charge. They answered all my questions beforehand. I even had a Skype call with them and they were just awesome. So big shout out to them. Now building the CNC was pretty much like building a Lego kit. You cannot believe it, but yeah, it's a Lego kit and it works straight out of the box and I'm super super pumped and have happy about it. Now let's go into the build. The CNC came on a pallet in 30 or so boxes which made it pretty easy to get it down into my basement. I was already excited how well everything was labeled at this point. The build started by screwing the plates to the aluminum profiles that will accept the height adjustable feet. I have the Avid Pro 4896 which has 6 feet. The whole frame is assembled with these connectors. They accept a screw that goes into the roll in T nuts and slide into the ends like this. Two feet got a cross member before these black brackets got put into place, which will later stiffen up the frame. To align the brackets flush with the top of the verticals, I took a straight piece of ply. To connect the pieces, I luckily had awesome help. Seriously, that is probably the only step that would have been tricky on my own. On top went the horizontal that will be the actual frame around the CNC bed. In the intro I said it was like building a Lego Technic kit. Doesn't this look pretty much like it? Since the 4896 is over 2.5 meters long, the horizontals are out of two connected parts. Then I inserted the cross members of the bed and to space them right I had two pieces of ply cut to the appropriate length. With a trigger clamp I held them in place while screwing them tight. This way I worked my way to the end. To check the bed for square I measured the diagonals and miraculously it was already dead on. The linear rails have a decent number of screws and T-nuts and I tried to make the assembly as efficient as possible. I inserted the screws first, rotated the rails 90 degrees and then attached the T-nuts with the help of a cordless drill. Then I could slide them into the profiles. To align the rails precisely, these aluminum blocks came with it. I could clamp the rails to them and they also make sure the junctions where two rails meet are flush with each other. The gear rack installation was pretty much the same. To get the right spacing between two pieces, a third piece of gear rack got clamped to the underside. Then I could slide the linear bearings onto the rails and I found this step very exciting since it was the very first movable part of the build. With the provided grease gun, I inserted grease into the bearings before attaching the dust covers to the rails. I screwed these bumpers to the end plates and then they went on the ends. Quick side note, I love that color, makes the machine look so much cooler. The end plates also accept the screw for the sensor flex. 
which are for the sensors that tell the machine where the physical zero location or the maximum travel is. Then I adjusted the flags to a distance of 14 mm from the end plates. After that it was time to start the assembly of the riser that would hold the gantry later. The beam for the gantry was the heaviest single part of the complete build, but still totally manageable. The geared rack and linear rails part was the same as on the bed before. But my basement was simply too small. Luckily the door was just in the right place. Four of the linear bearings got connected to this plate that will hold the complete Z-axis component. At this point I made the decision to pull off a night shift and to finish the assembly before the CNC before I would go to bed. Shout out to my wife who would take over the kids the next morning so I could sleep a little. Here you see me assembling the drive for the stepper motors. Three in total, two for the Y and one for the X. A tensioner cam generates the belt tension and then I screwed it tight. The assemblies then connected to the risers. And with this spring mechanism the gear is held to the rack. The Z-axis came fully assembled. I just screwed it to the plate, attached the motor and reinstalled the covers. Now the whole cable running and management started and it was around 1 am at this point, just for reference. The cable trays were quick to install and hold the cable tracks. Running all the cables as well as labeling them was definitely the most exhausting part. Maybe it was just the late hours and the fact that my bag of crisp was already empty. After two and a half hours of fuzzing around with all the cables, I was excited to install the limit switch sensors and the electronic boxes. Attaching the spindle to the Z-axis was the final step and felt just awesome. 4.30 am and I was super tired, happy and excited. As you might be able to tell from this Instagram story. I want to take a moment and thank all of my subscribers. Thank you so much, it really means the world to me and if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you enjoy what you're seeing, please hit that subscribe button down below and also activate the bell so you won't miss another video. After a fair amount of sleep, I started to build the spoil board. I decided to go with the same construction and layout as Jay Bates and bought his plans. They are fantastic by the way. I attached the European version of a 2x4 to the frame's cross members with bolts and T-nuts. Rounding the beams level was the very first time for me using a CNC in general and I was super nervous, especially because the whole action is very close to the frame. I hugged the emergency stop ready to push it for the whole job. All went fine though and I could slap on the first layer for the spoil board. 19mm MDF.
I secured it with two screws and then used the CNC to drill the holes to connect it to the beam. In that first layer, I routed the slots for the aluminum profiles as well as holes to attach them to the spoil board. To make the process a bit more efficient, I placed all the bolts in the holes with the heads in line with the profile slots, placed the profiles on them and from underneath the CNC I lifted and turned the bolts. Thereby they went into the slot and I could secure them with a nut. Not exactly ergonomic under the CNC, but I made it work. The second layer of the spoil board is made of this 38mm MDF and oh boy is that heavy. I ripped it down on the table saw to fit the spaces between the profiles. I decided to glue up the MDF layers, but in hindsight I would opt to just screw them together from underneath to make it easier in the future to disassemble the whole thing, which now is pretty impossible. To spread that much glue, a paint roller was the perfect tool. These offcuts with three holes and bolts that go into the aluminum profiles were perfect to apply enough clamping pressure to the MDF strips. Time to surface the fresh spoil board with this 59mm surface cutter. Love that thing. I had this improvised dust chew to not have an overwhelming amount of MDF dust everywhere. In some places the bit took away about a millimeter and in other spots just 0.5 millimeters. After the surfacing I took a 12 millimeter bit to cut the 20 millimeter holes for the bench dogs. And yes, the bit might have hit the pipe of the vacuum a couple of times. The nameplates were the very last step of the build and thank you so much Chris from I'm not an expert at this on Instagram for coming up with the awesome name R2 Bow2 for the CNC. Alright, the CNC is finished and at this point when I'm filming this I do have the CNC for over a year and it has done a tremendous job. I absolutely love that thing, it's a beast and yeah, it's just working great. You might have wondered why I went with such elaborate spoil board. Now, the dark holes, for example, they let me position multiple work pieces at the same time. Here, the bench dogs ensure the work pieces are square to the machine axis and I also know in digital space where they are. So I can now machine multiple work pieces at the same time, for example, drilling holes in precise locations without swapping out after every single work piece was routed by the CNC. Now the aluminum tracks, they let me insert hold fast and clamps and everything so I can hold my work pieces. And it's pretty cool to have both, like the bench dogs and also this, the aluminum profiles, they kind of work pretty well together, like on a workbench for example. Now the big question you might have asked yourself, why do I need such a big CNC? Now I really felt the CNC could push my business to another level, because I can offer products that I could never ever efficiently produce by hand or with other machines. On the Kumiko blocks, for example, I offer in the starter kits, I now can engrave the angles nicely here. The machine also routes the slot here and drills the hole for the threaded insert. For these adjustable stops that go into the Kumiko block, I now have a template like this. It goes onto the CNC, I can now put in blanks 
blank strips here and the CNC routes this little channel here. That's kind of hard to do on the router table because you have to do a plunge cut every time. It's pretty time intense and also not very safe and I kind of like it now because the CNC does all the work and I can now offer them at a better price. Another product I'm able to offer now because of the CNC is this RAM shooting board. It's pretty much the deluxe version of a shooting board and your plane rides on an angle on a low friction sheet here and the CNC does all the joinery work here and I pretty much have a building kit that I put together, glued together and it's precisely square with everything because the CNC made all the joinery as well. I also do these little zero clearance inserts here with the CNC and it's just awesome. Same goes for the domino station I have, all joinery is made by the CNC and I can offer it at a reasonable price. I haven't done really furniture project with the CNC up to this point. I've done a couple of shop projects. One of the projects I did was a card for my computer that controls the CNC and it will be the next video and it's a pretty cool one I think because all the joinery is made with the CNC and it just was a quick fun project to yeah utilize the CNC. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in one of the products I showed here, you can find it in the, my shop in the description down below. I really appreciate your support here. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Now, see you in the next video.